Happy Tuesday. And today on Coffee and Conversation with your girl, Shaq Kenya. When you get a minute, go to that YouTube channel, Shaq Kenya. And hit subscribe, guys. Look at some of the videos. And if you see anything that you like, Just hit share, y'all. So today in the syllabus, I had something else to talk about, but we're going to wrap up yesterday because we've been in um, Have You Failed Your Kids World for one, one day too many. So we're going to wrap it up today the best I can. And then I'm going to try to get into whatever it was I wanted to talk to y'all about today. Try to tie it in together. So to wrap it up, you should have realized where you failed your children and you should have apologized to them. Just that simple. And it ain't going to be just one apology. Now, it's going to be several times after you look at the whole list of things that you've done to where you possibly could have failed them that you're going to be apologizing. So don't try to do it all in one survey. Don't do that. One at a time. Get closure. And then keep moving, right? So, yeah, apologize to your kids. Or you did the self-reflecting again and you went through if you failed them and you realized that you have not failed them at all. Yeah, you realize that the strain between you and your child is all come from your baby mama, your baby dad. Oh, y'all like boots? It's nice outside today, y'all. A little chilly, but yeah, it's nice outside. I know, I know. Isn't that something? <laughs> cause, cause if you don't have no relationship with your baby, or you have a strained relationship with your baby, and you realize that you have not failed them in any of those ways that we discussed then that means that that relationship you have with your child is based on the relationship you have with your baby mama or your baby dad. Fix it, Jesus. <laughs> Fix it, Jesus. How is your relationship with your baby mama or your baby daddy? Think about that. Do you <laughs> Do y'all speak when y'all see each other? Are y'all cordial to one another? Do y'all work together? Do y'all plan events for the baby together? Do y'all attend? Hey, Dre, how you doing, baby? We got Dre Murray in the building. How you doing, boo? Welcome, welcome to Coffee and Conversation. Yeah, are y'all cordial? Do y'all talk to one another? Are y'all friendly? Do y'all get along? Do y'all go to each other's house? Do y'all celebrate the baby together? Yeah, do you get along? What's your relationship like with your baby mama and your baby daddy? Because if you are sharing a child with somebody, You cannot have a good, healthy relationship with your child if you don't have a good, healthy relationship with that baby mom or that baby daddy. <laughs> it's impossible. It's impossible. You have to resolve whatever issue you have with them from the divorce, the separation, the breakup. You have to resolve that issue before you can move forward. You have to. We teach that in the workshop. That's why we do that in the forgiveness workshop. Yeah. Before we can go any further, we resolve the issues before we can go any further in the, like, in the um, workshop. Yeah. That's why that's so important. Because all that anger, aggression, and hatred that that baby mama or that baby daddy has for you, it's going to come out and it's going to be pressed upon that child. Ain't no getting around it. That's why you got to have an ounce of love and respect for your baby mama and your baby daddy. Because with all this hatred around, it's a good chance that you're probably talking bad about that baby mama or that baby daddy with somebody else in the presence of that child. If not talking to that child. Hey, Keith. How you doing, boo? I'm telling you. But if y'all resolve y'all issues, if y'all found closure from the relationship, if y'all healed from the relationship, and if y'all have both moved on... It's less likely that you're going to talk bad about that parent in front of that child. And it's less likely that you're going to allow anybody else to do it. And it's less likely that you're going to allow that child to do it. That's where that ounce of love and respect come in at. Which is automatically restored once y'all resolve y'all issue and you're forgiven. So for my case, when I went back and looked at it. Yeah, because I'm just like y'all. Shit, I'm going through it too. <laughs> I ain't seen my baby either. My baby daddy don't like me either. I'm, yeah. So, yeah, when I went through mine, I didn't miss many parent-teacher conferences. 
I didn't miss many games from either one of the children. The only games I didn't attend was the away games. And so those days I actually scheduled meetings with my parents for attitude adjustment on those days that the girls went away for away games. But other than that, the games that were here, I didn't miss none. For the baby, I didn't miss no cheer competitions and I didn't miss any golf outings. Yep. I know that's very important. Now, when I was grading myself with that house situation, when we lost the house and I had to find us another house, I, I say I that was a C. <laughs> I didn't fail them completely, but it, it could have been one if we would have became homeless, right? But considering I was able to get a property, fix it up, and move us in it, and I gave myself a seat for that. So I wouldn't say complete failure. Yep. I don't abuse any drugs or alcohol. Meaning when you see me, I'll be mainly sober. <laughs> now when it came to the stability part and keeping, keeping employment, I've worked since I was 16. I was out of work when I lost my job at Receiving Hospital. I was out of work for about five months looking for a job. And then I finally got employed at Orchard's Children's Services, the foster care agency. So for those five months, I was a failure. I give myself a seat. Yeah, because I ended up getting a job and I was looking for a job. You know, when you lose a job, looking for a job is a job, right? So, yeah, it took me about four and a half, five months before I was able to get another job. So, yep. Yeah. Um, I don't gamble, yeah. I might go to the casino maybe once a year, and I'm not judging y'all who do, you know. And I might buy a lottery ticket if I get a hunch. You know, you get a hunch, win a bunch, I'm not, I might do that. But it's rare, and that's crazy that it skipped me because my grandmama's ran numbers. So, yeah, I don't know how it got past me, but it did. So I didn't gamble. Um, I don't have any mental health issues, no diagnoses, no disorders of any kind you know depression is something that seeps in every now and then but that's only been since the baby has been removed yeah so i know exactly what it is and i don't have a problem talking to anybody in the sense that i feel down depressed and need to talk to somebody yep i know how important mental health is but yep as far as my mental health it's good i'm pretty sane my physical health is good i'm 50 and this is what i look like Right, so I exercise, I eat healthy, always have been. That's all the children has ever seen in my life. And that goes back to my auntie and my grandma. They stayed in the gym all throughout my childhood, so therefore I stay in the gym. I know how important it is to keep moving. I know how important it is to stay healthy. I know how important it is to take care of your health. You only get one body. You only get one. Right, so yep, stay healthy. Um, make, go to my doctor's appointments. Um, yep, I didn't keep, miss too many steps with the kids. Yep, I kept up with them daily. Hey, Baskin, how you doing, boo? Checking in on Instagram. Keith, what you say? What happened if the baby mama have animosity towards the dad and he tries to keep the peace? She acts all spanky because he moved on. Yeah, she has issues, Keith. She hasn't, she hasn't found closure and she hasn't healed. That's something that she has to do on her own. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about it. Ain't nothing you can do about it. And if it gets to a point where you can't see your child, then you need to take her to court. A lot of them dads be scared to go down to the front of the court because of the horror stories. All you know of is they taking your money. But nope, they actually have resources down there for dads. And it's, it's other programs out here who advocate for dads. So if it's a situation where she's poisoning that baby against you or not letting you see that baby, yep, you have rights. Yep, you take her to front of the court and try to get your rights if y'all can't come to some type of resolve. So, um, yep, the kids' happiness was important to me. By me having individual relationships with them, if I noticed that they were having a bad day or something was off, I might disappear with one of them and take them to go get some snacks, some little zoom zooms and wham whams or some ice cream or something to make their day. Something, you know, to get them back to speed with everybody else, right? I know. Um, maintain stability. We lost the house. That was shaky, but got another one. And then I end up moving from there into the house that I'm in now. So I've been where I'm at now over nine years, so pretty stable. Yep, I tried to maintain that. Um, when I noticed behavior issues in the children, I acted immediately. Yep, so when Brent Jeremy started acting out, I tried to use boot camps and therapy and all those other devices to try to get him. Hey, Nisi Poob, how you doing? Day -day hey, Robert, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Logan, good morning. Checking in on Facebook. Hey, Instagram, I see you. Let me send you some ways. What up, TikTok? Good morning. How you doing? Yep, so... Maintain stability. Yep, when they behaviors, when Jeremy started acting out, I started trying to find programs for him. And then I eventually created attitude adjustment. My oldest daughter started acting out, took her ass to Vista Maria and shook her up a little bit, scared the hell out of her. I ain't had no problems out of her. I didn't have any behavioral issues from my children. 
not to that extent. Jeremy was the only one, but outside of that, it was like, it only made sense that I didn't, considering I have a program that's geared towards dealing with children with behavior issues. <laughs> Ain't that something? People bring their kids to me that act out. So it would be only fitting that my children were well behaved. I didn't have any behavior issues. I didn't have any problems, for real. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it. Fix it. So I kept them safe. Meaning I didn't stay in any domestic violence relationships. Like the dude I'm going through this with, he was one of them. I got out of there. Yep. My other baby daddy was one of them. I got out of there. Yep. I didn't keep them in domestic violence situations. Meaning I didn't have my kids fighting with me. I didn't have, they didn't witness me fighting and all that type of, that wasn't, that wasn't a repetitive thing. That wasn't something that was going to be going on. Because if he hit you once, he's going to hit you again, right? So yeah, I wasn't going to stay there, you know? So yep, I didn't keep them in domestic, domestic violence situations. Yeah, they always kept them safe. They weren't physically abused. They weren't molested by anybody or by myself. You know what I'm saying? So kept them safe. Yep. Um, let me see. I went back to school to better myself. I got a bachelor's degree in criminal justice and all those other certificates that you see on my wall. I'm always going back to school. I'm about to school, go to school now for my master's in mental clinical health. Yep, education is very important. They can't take that away from you. You know what I'm saying? They can't take it away. So, yeah, bettering myself. I wrote my book, Dysfunctional Family Not. I started the radio show. I started the youth program, Attitude Adjustment, where I help children with behavior issues. Yeah, I, um, I put together quite some resume for myself. Why wouldn't I be a valued asset to her? You mean I couldn't have taught her nothing? For me not to have a relationship with her at all. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it. I had a plan for raising them. Yep, I had a way of putting them in every facet of my life. Everything that I was dealing with, everything I was working on. The book, the trailer for the book, the radio show, everything. I had them in a place. The cleaning company, they was in a place. They had a role to play. I planned all that out. Planned it all out. Yes, I know. And then what else did I put? Yep, had a plan for raise now. How could she not love and respect me? I know. If I'm doing all of this, right? I know. Fix it, Jesus. See, my questions are different. Because it's like, how could she not? How, how, how can... How? <laughs> how can nothing that I've done with my life and accomplished mean nothing to nobody? How could that happen? What I tell y'all yesterday, as hard as I was working on all of this stuff, somebody was on the other side working just as hard to undo it. Because that's the only way you can make it make sense. How can you undo all of this, right? <laughs> so the question today is, you know, do you do you think, because that's wrapping up yesterday. Did you fail your children? Obviously, I couldn't have failed them that much. Not to have, a, not to have no relationship. Yeah, I couldn't have. How can you fail them if I'm doing all of this, right, if I know? So do you think before you speak? To make sure you don't say anything you're going to regret, say anything you got to take back, say anything you got to apologize for. Words are very powerful. Just want to say that. Yeah. Have you ever spoke something into existence? I know. I know. That's why you better be careful. You got to be careful what you say. You got to be careful what you say around these kids and in front of these kids and what you speak into existence. So, y'all, that's it for Coffee and Conversation today. Um, I think that was all. I covered everything, wanted to close up yesterday, wanted to ask you if you think before you speak, if you don't start, um, and I think I covered everything, y'all, so that's it for Coffee and Conversation, enjoy your day, I'm out Instagram, I'm out Facebook, ah, fix it, Jesus, oh, Keith, you were still talking to me, oh, damn, I didn't end it, wait, <laughs> about Instagram, <laughs> Keep you should have been my baby. Ah, you so silly, Keep. You know I had a crush on you in school. <laughs> yeah, I'm out. <laughs> Keep you gonna get me in trouble. I'm out. <laughs>